You've bought your shiny new lure and you're going to have to rig it. Now we have got other sections on which rigs you should choose and what rigs do, but there are lots and lots of choices. We're just going to go through a couple of my favourite rigs and show you how to do them using the tools that you would commonly have as a game fisherman, such as hand crimpers, wire cutters, scissors and pliers. Okay, we're going to be using two millimetre wire. Now, a lot of people find it very difficult to work out what length the wire is. Now, I do prefer my hooks right down the back of the skirt. Um, so we're going to be using the wire like that. And a really quick trick is work out where the back of the lure shoulder is, mark the wire down to the end of the skirt, and you'll find that that measurement will be just right with the rig we're doing. Get yourself a pair of beak cutters. These are spectacular. They will cut your wire nice and round and you won't have any problem putting the crimps on. Lovely and clean. We're going to be using Pakula crimps uh, for this. These are figure eights and they're designed to be incredibly strong but also be able to be used with hand crimpers. Okay, we're going to start off with a small loop at one end. Just undo them. And we don't want the loop tight, we want it quite open. So we'll just pull it in a bit more from there, about that big. And we're going to crimp it nice and tight. These are wire, we want them nice and tight. Now, when you're crimping wire, you do crimp right to the end of the swage or the crimp. So we've got them once, twice, but now we'll do the third one right on the end just to make sure that's nice and tight. Now the way a wire crimp works, it actually goes hard up against the wire and you see how the wire is braided, it actually deforms and that's what holds that crimp, all that friction. Okay, we'll now put the hook on. These hooks have already been sharpened, they've already taken the barbs down. Tighten up so once again, we want a loose loop. We don't want it to go tight, we want it to be loose. So we'll just tighten it up until it's still loose, not too tight. Now we'll just crimp it up and we're going to start right at the end of the crimp. We'll pull the wire through so it's just, we can just see it level with the end. If you put the wire out further, you will cut your hands and you will get little pin pricks. But once again, lots of strength and tighten your crimp up going all the way to the ends. Okay, lots of pressure. Let's do that one again. And now we have the wire and the hook connected with a couple of crimps at either end. Okay, now we do the leader. And what we'll do is one end we're going to put, here we're using a single oval crimp which is designed for mono. The way these crimps work is they actually deform the mono. It doesn't weaken it, it just deforms it so that the friction actually holds it nice and close. Now there are lots of ways of using chafing gear. Here we're using stainless steel springs. You can also use nylon tubing. And we'll just feed that on, as you can see there. And we're going to pull the nylon through the crimp. And just to make sure it doesn't pull through, we're just going to put a little bulb on the end with a heat gun here. See a little bulb there, wait for it to cool down. And once again, I didn't heat it up next to the other piece of the leader, so the heat didn't affect that piece of the leader. So we pull the tag end through till it hits the knob. Then we push the spring down to the tag end, and that will make the loop really easy to form like that. A lot of people have a lot of trouble doing that here. Now we're crimping nylon. We don't crimp it all the way to the ends. We leave a little bit at the end, just to remain flared so that that end doesn't get squeezed down so it doesn't cut the nylon. Now be really careful with crimpers. The crimp should fit those holes really nicely. If they don't, get another crimp because that will cause problems. You really do need the right size crimps out for the leader and for the crimping tool. Squeeze down again. Now when you're crimping nylon, you can see we crimped both those ends the crimp's one way. If we did that again, the crimp would actually bend. So we turn the crimp over and we crimp it from the other side. And that keeps your crimp nice and straight as we have there. Okay, all good. Now we'll put the lure on. 
Now here we're actually doing a 60 degree shackle ring. We've shown you that in the underwater footage and you can plainly see why we're going to be using the 60 degree rig because it's nice and stable. Okay, don't forget to feed your lure on through the leader tube, comes out the other side and once again we're going to use a, ni a nylon crimp, the oval, and we're going to once again feed it through, burn the end, nice little dob, pull it tight and in this end we're going to put a thimble, one of these. Now when you buy a thimble they're open like that and you can't use them like that. If you use them like that it may fold over and actually cut your line on the end so we don't use them like that. We have to get a pair of pliers, put in the pliers and we close the ends up so that they're together and that won't turn around and it won't cut you off. Okay, put it in the loop like that, pull the crimp up nice and tight and here we actually start at the thimble end Leave a bit of space once again because we're, we're crimping nylon. Squeeze tight. Once again, other end. Leave a little bit. Squeeze tight. Remember the trick. Turn it over so it keeps the crimp straight. Okay, that end's done. Now we get the wire we did before. We're going to put some shrink wrap on it so that the hook can't turn around and get all cocked up like that. We don't want it cocked, we want it to stay like that. So we can actually use some shrink tape. Uh, we actually make this shrink tape, it's a four to one shrinkage, and the large size has adhesive in it so it doesn't move. We do a piece to go over the eye like that. Then we've got two smaller pieces. You can see one of them is printed with the Pakula name. Just trim that up, and that goes over the shank once again, this has got adhesive in it. And what we do is you can moisten the hook so it's easier to slip this on. That goes underneath there. And that's adhesive. That will hold that more in position. Now we use a piece of this heat shrink, only as long as the crimp. And we feed that on over the loop and down to that end. Then we get the heat gun. Be careful of this, don't burn yourself, these are hot. Just rest the heat shrink on top of the heat gun there until it shrinks and keeps it in position. Same again on that side, just hold it down there, keep it in position so it doesn't shrink back. And then you heat it until you just see a little bit of glue coming out, then you know the glue has melted and it's set and the job is right. Okay, now we have the heat shrink in position and you can see now that that can't get all cocked up like that because the heat shrink coming halfway up the hook eye holds it in position so that it can't get tangled up and that's why we do the heat shrink like that. Okay, the rest of the rig is, we now cut off a small piece again. This is the smaller size without the adhesive about an inch long, feed it on the wire, then we get the second hook, feed it through the loose collar and we do leave this loose. You don't want to heat shrink it. The whole purpose of this rig is to have two hooks that are balanced and will line up themselves. We get the leader end, pass a shackle through it, grab the hooks, you want them both pretty much both face up at the moment put the shackle pin in it. Now a lot of people are worried about shackles. These are actually the strongest part of this rig. They are about 800 pounds. Nothing else in this system is that strong. Just tighten it up with a pair of pliers. You can actually use the hook for leverage. Just bring it around there. Tighten it up. Now these pins are tapered so they're not going to loosen off. These are used in very large yachts so you're not going to have a problem with it. So there we go, we've got the 60 degree rig. Let's check it for length. And we can see that is absolutely perfect. Now to get it to 60 degrees, you simply hold the rig up. Okay, I have done a lot of these, that's already at 60 degrees, but if yours isn't, then all you have to do is grab the wire and spin it 
with the grain of the wire, spin it around, and you'll see that you can actually change the wire setting quite easily. Okay, we want it at 60 degrees, which is about no, a bit more, about there. And there, the hook points that we want to sit in the back, so that we can sit the hooks in the back of the darker side like that, and the hooks will stay there, so that your lure will run with the dark colour up. Both hooks will be point up at 60 degrees, and if you raise a fish, you've got a very good chance of catching it. Now with the leader too, here we've chosen 400 pound leader. It's a hard nylon. Now in the market today, there are soft and hard nylons. The hard nylon has got much more abrasion resistance than the soft nylon. So this really is, uh, even though it's 400 pound, it's got the same abrasion resistance as the 600 pound leader. Okay, that lure is now ready to use.